Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about epilepsy and whilst hopefully interesting and awareness raising, it's not a means of diagnosis. If you're worried, go see a doctor. Epilepsy is a brain disorder, also called a neurological disorder that causes seizures. And these seizures are bursts of electrical activity in the brain. Your brain is made up of cells called neurons which are constantly sending signals to communicate. A seizure is a spontaneous, uncontrolled burst of this electrical activity coming from many neurons at the same time. These bursts occurring in different parts of the brain give rise to lots of different types of seizures which I'll talk about. First I'm going to show you real footage of the most widely recognisable seizure. A sudden loss of consciousness and a stiffening of the body followed by rhythmic jerking of the arms and legs. This is called a tonic-clonic seizure. A huge thank you to Zach Sanders and this footage of himself and permission for me to use it here. Watching this can be disturbing to some people so please feel free to skip ahead. Here it is. I'm going to explain what's understood about the causes of epilepsy and the current research being done to try and find new treatments. The tonic-clonic seizure that you just saw is only one type of seizure. There are lots of different types of seizures and they can have many different effects. Uh, let me draw out this flow diagram. Seizures are initially split into two main categories, focal seizures and generalized seizures. Focal seizures means that the seizure originates in just one side of the brain. Generalized seizures means that the seizure originates in both sides of the brain. For both focal and generalized seizures, you then have a further breakdown of motor seizures and non-motor seizures. A motor seizure causes involuntary change in muscle activity. The motor and non-motor seizures for focal and generalized then have many different subcategories. There are loads and they can occur with awareness or impaired awareness. Here is the tonic-clonic seizure you saw before. These can start focally and spread to the other side of the brain or start on both sides of the brain at the same time. If a seizure doesn't end within five minutes by itself, it becomes something called status epilepticus. And this is when drugs will be given to try and bring about an end to the seizure. As you can see, epilepsy is far more than just tonic-clonic seizures and status epilepticus. And it's interesting to recognize just how many other types of epileptic seizures there are that aren't really depicted in films or TV. There are cognitive seizures that can alter a person's thinking, memory or perception. There are atonic seizures or drop attacks causing a sudden loss of muscle tone causing the person to fall down or collapse. There are sensory seizures that can affect senses such as sight, touch and smell that causes people to perceive senses and smells that aren't actually present. There are also absence seizures that involve a brief lapse in consciousness that typically last a few seconds where the person can seem unresponsive and stare blankly into space. There are automatisms, repetitive actions like lip smacking, fidgeting and chewing. And there are more complex actions like walking and running. There are some rare types of seizures like ecstatic epileptic seizures where the person can experience intense joy, euphoria or religious ecstasy often accompanied by hallucinations and altered perception. So many, many different types of seizures. There's also older terminology for seizure classification that you may have heard of. A partial seizure described a focal seizure. A complex seizure depicted impaired awareness. A putty mouse seizure described an absent seizure. And a grand mouse seizure described a tonic-clonic seizure. Ah, I'll mention flashing lights. So flashing lights causing seizures is something called photosensitive epilepsy. And I think people generally think this is the most common type, but it actually only applies to less than 1% of people with epilepsy. Okay, diagnosis. Epilepsy is typically diagnosed by two unprovoked seizures or one unprovoked seizure plus an enduring predisposition to generate further seizures, evidence that further seizures are likely to occur. Detecting such evidence of potential for further seizures can be done in a few ways, including EEG, which stands for electroencephalogram, which can measure abnormal bursts of electrical activity in the brain. There are also brain imaging techniques like CT scans and MRI scans that can also reveal abnormalities that are strongly associated with epilepsy. 
deficiency, such as a focal cortical dysplasia. These abnormalities increase the risk of seizures, so are considered as part of the ultimate diagnosis. The classification of seizures, along with EEG and other neuroimaging results, can be considered alongside other clinical features like age of onset and responsiveness to treatments to try and diagnose an epilepsy syndrome. There are numerous epilepsy syndromes reflecting the wide variety of the condition and its diverse symptoms and effects on individuals. Accurately diagnosing a syndrome is also helpful for predicting the disease's progression. This leads us to the available treatment options for epilepsy. Different anti-epileptic drugs can be prescribed in specific doses to manage the condition. It's important to note a distinction between drugs that are used to end a seizure immediately during status epilepticus and drugs that are given to prevent future seizures, allowing the person to live a seizure-free life. Over the long term, some drugs such as valproate can be highly effective in preventing seizures and can be taken for extended periods to maintain seizure freedom. If the first drug tried isn't effective, then other drugs can be tried either in sequence or in combination. If drug treatments fail, then something called vagus nerve stimulation, or VNS, can be considered. This medical treatment involves implanting a small device under the skin of the chest that sends electrical impulses to the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs from the brainstem through the neck and into the chest and abdomen. VNS can help to reduce the frequency and the severity of seizures in some people that haven't responded well to medications. Whilst generally safe and well tolerated, it's not effective for everyone with epilepsy. In some people with epilepsy, surgical intervention may be considered to remove a small area of the brain associated with seizures. And this can cure some people with epilepsy, allowing them to come off of their anti-epileptic drugs. However, extensive testing is required for this option to be considered and the likelihood of success isn't actually guaranteed, though this becomes very specific to each individual. There's also a literature around the use of a ketogenic diet, a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet to reduce seizures that can be prescribed. This paper found such a diet to reduce seizure frequency in children. A theory of how this works is that this diet increases the production of ketone bodies, which are molecules produced by the liver when carbohydrate intake is low. These ketones can act as an alternative fuel source for the brain, which seems to reduce seizure frequency in some people. Okay, that's a lot of information. Seizure classification, syndromes, diagnosis, treatment. Where's the latest research at? What is the latest research even looking to achieve? There is a tidal wave of research being conducted globally to enhance treatment options for epilepsy. One vital area of research focuses on something called epileptic brain networks, which investigates the connectivity between different brain regions in how they become activated or deactivated. Studies suggest that individuals with epilepsy exhibit abnormal connectivity between different parts of their brain. This paper demonstrated how a particular brain network reduced in connectivity before ramping up just before epileptic activity occurred. Studies like this contribute to understanding underlying causes of epilepsy to guide future research and potential treatments. Another fascinating area of research is being conducted into something called seizure forecasting, which is kind of like weather forecasting but for seizures, aiming to identify brain activity patterns that can predict the likelihood of a seizure. If successful, this research can lead to development of a device and analysis technique that could give people future warning of an impending seizure. This paper showed that seizure risks actually have cycles, meaning people have times they are more and less likely to have a seizure. Although this device may not prevent seizures, having a couple of minutes warning, plus a buddy system that notifies a nearby friend or family member, can be really useful for the person experiencing a seizure. There's also a field of research that explores the use of electrical currents or magnetic fields to cause changes in the brain. Research shows this to be a promising area where some people experience benefit, but no knock out the park findings just yet. There's also a fascinating area of research looking at whether people can use feedback of their physiological responses, like their sweat response, to try and exert control on their autonomic nervous system to try and reduce the likelihood of seizures occurring. This is actually the research I'm doing. I should probably 
do a separate video about that, shouldn't I? Epilepsy can have a significant impact on a person's life, but it's also provided valuable insights into the workings of the brain. Abnormal activity in one part of the brain early in seizure, the seizure prodrome, can cause interesting subjective experiences that give us clues about the normal functions of different brain regions. For example, seizures originating in a part of the brain called the temporal lobe have been shown to provoke feelings of deja vu, revealing the role of this brain region in cognition and memory, producing an experience of false familiarity, deja vu, when it fires. This paper summarizes this area called seizure semiology really well. It's fascinating stuff. If you're still watching at this stage, firstly, thank you very much. And you're also probably very interested in epilepsy, so I'll just mention seizure first aid. The Epilepsy Society's current first aid approach is the three C's, Calm, cushion, cool. Stay calm, take control of the situation. Cushion their heads with something soft and cool for an ambulance. It's actually also good, if possible, to try and get a video of the seizure, providing you know the person and they would be okay with that, because a video can help the doctors afterwards to diagnose what happened and inform the treatment. The International League Against Epilepsy is a global organization dedicated to advancing the understanding and treatment of epilepsy and helps to fund and organize research around the world. World. This is also the group that classifies seizures. Epilepsy is a burden on individuals and society in general, and I hope this video has helped to increase your understanding of this disease. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Right, work.